Hey everybody, welcome to the channel of the Whiteboard Doctor. Today we will be talking about class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs. So previously we put together kind of introductory video on the um, Vaughn Williams classification of antiarrhythmic drugs and an introduction to this little series we're going to do, excuse me, on the different classes of antiarrhythmic drugs. If you didn't catch that video, we'll link it in this video's description. You can kind of watch the whole series through. It'll be five videos, that introductory video, then this class one antiarrhythmic drug video with subsequent class two, class three, and class four video. Okay, class one antiarrhythmic drugs, also known as sodium channel blockers. What are they? How do they work? How do they relate to the cardiac action potential? And what can we use them for? Well, class one, um, antiarrhythmic drugs, they block the sodium channel that is responsible for phase zero of the cardiac action potential. In our introduction to antiarrhythmic drugs, we um, talked about the different phases of the cardiac action potential, and we'll get into it a little bit again here. Um, but if you want a more thorough discussion, check out that introductory video. Um, blocking phase zero of the cardiac action potential decreases the slope of phase zero, and we'll kind of draw this out in a second. Decreasing the slope of phase zero decreases the velocity of depolarization, which can be helpful for things like reentrant tachycardias and other tachydysrhythmias that this decreased velocity of the depolarization of the action potential can help abort those. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, just briefly, we'll draw out the cardiac action potential again. So it looks like this. And we have our phases, right? Phase four is down here and then recurs over here. We have phase zero, one, two. Oop, that's a funky looking two, two, three, and then down to four, right? And then remember, phase zero is when sodium flows into the cell, so increased intracellular sodium levels, um, which then, you know, if we start at, let's say, negative 90 millivolts, increases the positivity within the um, myocyte, and that then um, starts the action potential and depolarizes that cell, okay? And then when we get to phase one, we start to get calcium or um, potassium levels that start to decrease intracellular potassium levels. So potassium, which is also positively charged, just like sodium, starts to flow out of the cell, decrease that depolarization, which is balanced out by calcium flowing into the cell those sodium channels close, the calcium channels close, and then you just have potassium flowing out of the cell, repolarizing. So if we block those sodium channels and we decrease the slope of phase zero, the action potential would, oh, that's a little crooked, would look more like this when you give a sodium channel blocker. You're going to have a decreased slope of that depolarization right here during phase zero, which is going to slow the velocity down of the depolarization. Okay? In addition to that, um, the sodium channel blockers also have varying degrees of potassium channel blockade, which affects phase one and two and three of the cardiac action potential. And that affects what we call effective refractory time. An effective refractory time can be abbreviated, um, I'm sorry, effective refractory period can be abbreviated ERP. So not only do we get the sodium blockade but we also get some sodium and potassium blockade, which can change the cardiac um, action potential to look like this, right? You have that slope, and then you can get a prolonged refractory period where 
you get an increased effective refractory period because those potassium channels are not opening up and that way you're not repolarizing as quickly. So you can get kind of this decreased slope from sodium blockade and then an increase in the effective refractory period which again slows down the action potential. Alright, within class 1 drugs there's several different subclasses. Alright, so there are class 1A antiarrhythmics which include drugs like quinidine, also procainamide would be in this group, and disopyramide is another class one. And class one antiarrhythmic drugs have moderate sodium channel blocking and for their potassium channel blocking they increase the effective refractory period and we'll draw all this out once we finish talking about all the um, different classes of antiarrhythmics alright so then there's class 2A or I apologize we're still in class 1 there's class 1B antiarrhythmics and this includes things like lidocaine which is one that we will see clinically. Tokenide, which I have personally never used. Maxillotine, which I really have only seen maybe never. Maxillotine, and these are weak sodium channel blockers. All right, and they actually decrease the effective refractory period. All right. And then last we have class 1C. And class 1C include flecainide, which is a common one that we'll see used clinically. Propafenone, which is one that I think I've seen a handful of times. And then this third one I personally have never seen, morisazine. And these are strong sodium channel blockers. That's not how you spell strong. They are strong sodium channel blockers. And they don't change the effective refractory period. So what does this look like in terms of the cardiac action potential? Well, we'll say this is the normal cardiac action potential. That's a kind of an odd hump. Let's just redo that. The normal cardiac action potential. And then class 1A, which we'll put in green, we said is a moderate sodium channel blocker, right? And it increases the effective refractory period. So we're going to get that decreased slope we talked about. And then we're going to have an increased refractory period. Right, and here's the sodium blockade, phase zero, and then here's the increase in the refractory period with phase two from the uh, potassium channel blockade. All right, class 1b, we said, is a weak sodium channel blocker, and it de actually decreases the effective refractory period. So we'll have this one, and then we're going to have a decreased effective refractory period where it's shorter. All right, and then class 1C has a strong sodium channel blockade and then a normal um, effective refractory period. So what you can see is it's a strong sodium channel blockade and then a normal effective refractory period. All right, and that one's a little harder to see just because it's similar to the black color that we used for the main line here, but this would be... 1C. All right. So, summary is that sodium channel blockers, there's multiple different subclasses that all have different kind of strength of sodium channel blockade and also have different effects on the refractory period. These are good for tachydysrhythmias. They 
decrease the slope of phase zero because they're blocking that sodium channel in phase zero. And they also, many of them, affect the refractory period, either prolonging it, shortening it, or not changing it. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. Let us know what questions, thoughts, comments you have down below. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Feel free to check out any of our other anti-rhythmic videos. And we hope to uh, see you all next time. Stay well.